Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Session by Dr. Jagos. Today I'll be doing the last part, that is part four or Robert chapter 35. So Robert says now, let us see the value of vitamins in diet. So initially in the first, second, third part, I had told you he had taken examples of different drugs, synthetic drugs, aspirin, sulfanilamides, and now he's saying, Robert is saying, let us see the value of vitamins in our diet. This has become a burning subject among research chemists and therapeutics alike. So this is a talk of the town or a burning subject among the different researchers as well as the therapeutics. The source of vitamins in natural foods, especially raw fruit, has been recognized for some time. So as we all know, whatever vitamins are there in, the, in, in our food or in the raw fruit, it has been recognized. And of course, all sorts of synthetic vitamins have been discovered and their use are urged through the drug houses. No doubt, the natural vitamins are there in the food, in the fruits and vegetables which we eat, but the researchers have taken out a new source of synthetic vitamins which have been discovered and, it, which, was, and which is used in the different drug houses. One simple but obvious fact seems always to be overlooked by the manufacturing chemists. That is, while chemically, Chemically, the synthetic product may vary little from the natural. The difference is recognizable in the results. So no doubt from the true vitamins or for the naturally occurring vitamins and the synthetic vitamins, there is very little difference in chemically, but the seizable difference is seen in the result. It is hardly likely that a patient would suffer from too many vitamins through a normal diet. So if you take a normal diet, it is very, it is very I mean, unlikely that he would suffer from any side effects or excessive vitamin intake. The vitamin is normally balanced with the other food values. So Robert says that whatever you take, intake in the, in, by the food, by the food, the vegetables and the fruits we they are normally balanced. Through, though vitamins are necessary for life, there are many foodstuffs where added synthetic vitamins are an ineradicable ir, ir, part of the diet. So he says that no doubt that vitamins are necessary for the life. And in many foodstuffs also, they are added vitamins are there in the synthetic part. Since it has been found that these substances are necessary to life and development, the lab chemists gave more importance to it. So naturally the laboratory chemists also gave more importance to it because it was a part and parcel which is necessary for the maintenance and the development of life. The synthetic vitamins have the same chemical construction and are easily available at a comparatively low cost. So these synthetic uh, preparations or vitamins which were produced in the lab by the chemist, they were available at a comparatively lower cost as compared to the natural vitamins. We must use these vitamins to the fullest extent. Therefore, they are introduced into many basic foods such as flour, etc. Thus, we have a business venture which is very profitable to the to the producers of vitamins. So in every food, there is to add the synthetic vitamins. So this became a very profitable venture to the, to the business-minded people who produce these artificial or the synthetic preparation of vitamins and put them in different types of food. Thus it became almost impossible for an individual to escape a diet heavily laden with synthetic vitamins. So that actually every food was fortified with, this, with the synthetic vitamins. So it became impossible for an individual to escape from it. Careful research has shown that there's a danger for consuming too many vitamins. So the later on research showed that if you consume too many vitamins, it could be detrimental to the health of the patient or there could be a danger. This is a statement in accord with homeopathic principles. So this statement is naturally is in, is in line with homeopathic principles. And also when the law of nature, which governs the balance in all things and also the law of nature, that is what the amount necessary to effect any change in nature is the least possible. That means what? If we want to have any change, the stimulation, the stimulus should be the least possible. And action and reaction are equal and opposite. The manufacturing chemist states in his literature that it has been determined that the normal vitamin requirement is from 3 to 25 milligrams per day. So the chemists have said that the normal range or the daily use of vitamins is from 3 to 25 milligrams per day. We may expect that overdosing vitamins, which have a constructive and maintenance value, would have two definite reactions. So 
if you overdose it, if you, if you take extra vitamins or if you overdose yourself with vitamins, then it may have a constructive and a maintenance value. And there are two definite reactions. Now let us see those reactions which are constructive and maintenance value. First, a destructive action proportionate to its normal constructive action. So firstly, so the action, the two different reactions, number one, a destructive action proportionate to its normal constructive action. So whatever constructive action is there, this could, this could prove to be a destructive action. Secondly, the permanent discipline of the system to react to the normal vitamin intake. And secondly, what? The body will not be able to respond or there'll be a disability of the system to react to the normal vitamin intake. This latter is comparable to the effect of insulin administration in a diabetic patient. So he gives an example of insulin when we administer insulin in a diabetic patient. He soon loses the ability to produce an acidic secretion in his own economy. So what will happen? The permanent disability of the system to react normally to the, to the vitamin or to the insulin, which example he is given. So if you give artificial insulin or give synthetic insulin, the body will lose the ability to produce the necessary secretion of insulin in its own economy. Evolution bears witness to the fact that what a, cre what, that what a creature does not use, he must lose. So in evolution of life itself, it has been said that, or a witness is there saying that if you do not use the part or if you do not use the organ, if you do not use the proper system in its own natural way, then the function will be lost. Thus the excess supply of vitamins robs the body of its normal reception of the natural vitamin. So therefore, whatever synthetic vitamins are giving or you're giving the excess supply of vitamins, it robs the body of its normal reception of the natural vitamins. This is true for younger generations and also true for the for future generations as they'll be able to assimilate them from natural sources or will there be after a time some radical change in the human econ economy to compensate. So he said that is true for the younger generations and also for the future generations, saying that they have to be assimilate all the vitamins for the natural sources. If they use a synthetic source, then there will be some changes in the economy which will be there to compensate the balance of life. Also question in particular to the special functions, will these functions be permanently affected? For instance, if it has been demonstrated that vitamin C and vitamin D helps to overcome rickets. And a certain amount of these are necessary for the proper growth and development of the body structure. It has also been demonstrated that excessive doses will cause rickets. Since vitamin E is supposed to stimulate the, the generative functions, will massive dosage destroy or impair the function? So it says since vitamin E, as you all know, it helps to stimulate the generative function. So massive dosing of vitamin E, will it destroy or will it impair the function? We might continue this analogy to the list of vitamins so far isolated and studied. It is well for us as human physicians not to overlook the potentialities of the synthesis in the field of therapeutics. So as human physicians, we have to see or we have to tap the potentiality or the usefulness of the synthetic vitamins. We must but examine them carefully in light of our well-proved homeopathic principles. So we have to, these synthetic vitamins have to be examined in the light of the homeopathic principles. You must remember that the findings of the clinic wouldn't necessarily bear the same relationship to human patient as, as to the laboratory animal. So whenever you prove a remedy, you have to prove it on a healthy human being because if a remedy is proved on the lower animals, then the results will vary. The secondary results may be widely and directly opposite to the primary, which appear to be so brilliant and satisfactory. So therefore, if you prove it on a lower animal, the results will be they're directly opposite to the primary results. We must remember that our homeopathic laws, if they are natural laws, as we have, we have every reason to believe, are still worthy of our consideration. So Robert says that you have to remember that all our homeopathic laws or the current principle on which, on, on which homeopathy is based are still worthy of consideration. And they stand the test on time and they have been, and further experiments have been conducted and they are always permanent. And no such sure guidance has been found that is not accordance with these laws. 
and the test of time must be applied in every instance of a new discovery that has not been tried according to any law. It is foolish to reject the new, new just because it is new. It is even more foolish to accept every new finding blindly without fully testing its validity. So he says that any new law is there, it, it would be foolish to reject it. Why? Because you have to first test it and then only you, ha you have to see its, 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 its acceptance. Okay, so blindly do not, do not trust it, but you have to test it. The dominant school so far had failed to accept it. So that's all for this chapter. I hope you'll enjoyed it. I try to make it as simple for you in order to, for you to understand. So in the exam, the question comes, you all be able to write it nicely. Thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe to my channel. And if you like my video, please do give the thumbs up and also share the video. Thank you very much.